Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand this morning for the reading of God's Word. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Psalms, Psalm 103. Find your place here. And uh, let's read these first two verses together, and then we'll read our text in just a moment. Psalm 103, I want you to read it aloud today. Verse 1 and 2. Read with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm thinking today of a story about a young man named Paven Smith. This young man is now a professional baseball player. He played for the University of Virginia, and he was drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks. And uh, he got a signing bonus some years back of over $5 million. His first thought was what his parents had done for him all of his life. He recalled all the practices, all the hitting lessons, all the trips, all the games, all the things they had done to invest in his baseball career. And he thought, I've got to pay them back. I want to bless my parents. It's such an amazing thing what he did for them. As you think about one Christmas some years back, he wrote them a poem and uh, shared with them what was on his heart to do. And then he posted this later. Thank you for everything you have done for me. This doesn't make up for any of it. Love you both so much. Our home is finally all yours. Merry Christmas. In that poem, he told his parents that he had paid off their mortgage. And with tears... And weeping, they, as they realized what he had done, they said, but you can't do this. And he's like, I can, and I did. He wanted to bless the ones who had blessed him so. That's the heart of David right here in our text. Just like Paven Smith blessed his parents, the one who blessed him. The Lord wants us to understand from this passage, just like that, we must bless the one who has blessed us. Would you write that down this morning as our proposition, as our theme? We must bless the one who has blessed us. David is saying here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. You say, Pastor, really, how has God blessed us? I, I know certain ways. I think a lot of times we get it, how God has blessed us, but we forget it when it comes to our day to day lives. We take it for granted. We take advantage of it even. We fail to bless the one who has blessed us. And we just go on our way thinking, well, what's next? When are you going to do something else for me? I think it's amazing. So many people get into this mindset. It's not what have you done for me ever, but what have you done for me lately? The Bible teaches us that God daily loads us with benefits. His mercies are new Every morning. And so, so many different ways how God has blessed us. Why should we praise and honor Him? Now I want us to look here in our passage of Scripture, this text in verse 11 and following. There's so much good here in this text, but I want us to zero in on verses 11 through 16. And I want you to notice some things as we bless the name of the Lord today. The word bless literally means to kneel, to bow before, to praise. God wants us to have a heart that is humbled before Him. 
that is worshiping Him, not saying, Lord, would you bless me, but Lord, let me bless you. With all my heart, my mind, and my soul, my intellect, my emotion, my will, the very depth of my being, Lord, let me praise you. You have blessed me so. Now let me bless you, Lord. Let me honor you. And in this season, that's what God wants us to be mindful of. He says, bless the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Yahweh, Jehovah, the self-existent one. This name is found some 6,800 times in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew language, names speak of your person and your character. Yahweh is the name that is most closely linked to God's redeeming acts in the history of His chosen people. God is a God who is faithful, a God who delivers His people. God did that throughout the Old Testament. And David now brings us here under the pen of the Holy Spirit, inspiration to this psalm as a call to worship. Let's worship this God. Let's bless His name. Let's exalt His name together. Notice this psalm not only begins with bless the Lord in verse 1, but notice what we read in verse 20 through the end of the passage here. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, ye His angels that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearken unto the voice of His word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye His hosts, ye ministers of His that do His pleasure. Bless the Lord, all His works in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. It ends as it begins. I want you to write some things down here this morning. We must bless the one who has blessed us, number one, because of His great mercy toward us. That's what we read in verse 11. Now notice these pictures that God gives. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. The word great here, strong, exceeding. Write down the word immeasurable, immeasurable. The distance from the earth to the edge of the observable universe is 14.26 gigaparsecs. You ever heard that word? <laughs> gigaparsecs. Well, that's equivalent to 46.5 billion light years. Now, light years, the distance that light travels in one year, nearly 6 trillion miles. That would be 279 trillion miles any direction from here. God is saying to us, get this, it's so wonderful. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. Those who reverence Him, respect Him, acknowledge Him, put Him in His proper place in their lives. The ones who recognize that He is God and they are not. The ones who truly fear the Lord, they experience this great mercy that is immeasurable, it is infinite, ever unfolding, ever discovering, never ending. Amazing, is it not? They estimate there's some 100 to 200 billion galaxies in the universe. 200 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone. You'd have to count three stars per second for 2,000 years nonstop to count them all. Isn't that amazing? And yet God names them. He calls them all by their names. We read in Psalm 145. Isn't that amazing? We have a great God. Notice we read in verse 8, the Lord is what? Say it out loud. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Do you see that? He's merciful. He's compassionate. The thought is full of compassion. Plenteous in mercy, the thought is kindness, kindness toward us. It also has the thought of beauty. God looks and sees the good in each of us. I wonder, is that the way you look at people? If you're a merciful person, you're looking for the good in them, the beauty in them, the prospect, the potential. We often look at the fault or for it, right? The ugly. The negative. Some way we could discredit them and kind of 
put them down so we can build ourselves up. That's not the heart of God toward us. Amen. The heart of God toward us is to see the beauty, the potential, the heart within. Aren't you glad that God sees the heart? That's a convicting thought, but it's also a comforting thought, is it not? God sees my heart. Lord, I do love you, and I want to serve you. I want to do all of your will. Verse 17, But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. There it is again. And his righteousness unto children's children. I met a man this week, and I, we were talking. I said, well, me and my wife have 10 children, 15 grandchildren. And he's like, wow, that's amazing. He, me and my wife have seven grandchildren. And uh, I told him, I said, and one thing that I've realized of late is that that's the proper name they've been given, grandchildren. They're grand indeed. And the Bible is saying right here that God shows mercy not only to us, but to our children's children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Remember my great-grandmother and grandmother who prayed for me and my brother that God would save us and call us both to preach? which God did in answer to their prayer, though we'd face many challenges in this life. Pray for your children. Pray for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren and beyond, that God would bless them, that God would use you to influence them and point them to the Lord. I want to give the Lord proper place in my family, don't you? Thanksgiving is coming up. Stop and praise, thank the Lord as a family, perhaps around the table, right before you eat. Stop and pray. Ask God for understanding and insight to see His goodness. I think that's a prayer we ought to pray. Lord, show us Your goodness. Remind us. Roll back the curtain of memory. And show me where you brought me from and where I could have been today. Lord, show us how merciful you've been and bless his name. Praise him for that during these days. Number two, write this down if you will. Notice what we read in verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far, underline that, so far hath he removed our transgressions. I want you to write down the word forgiveness because of His forgiveness of our sin, we must bless the Lord. But I want you to write down this word complete. This speaks here of total and complete forgiveness. God will never visit us again and say, hey, what about those sins? Those sins will never come back and demand a payment from us. They're already paid for in full. I think about transgression here. The Bible talks about our transgressions. It literally means our rebellion against God, to revolt. Rebecca did a great job on her term paper that uh, she got a hundred on this semester. And it was on the definition of sin. I said, let me read that. And she broke it down, these different points. But I thought, what a great way to summarize this, the proper definition of sin according to the Bible. Sin is against God. Sin is only accurate when defined by God's Word. Sin at its core is a sin of autonomy, acting independently of God. Sin is a product of man's own heart, permeating his entire being, thus denoting the sole accountability by man for sin. Scripture teaches that God is not the author of sin. God is holy and cannot sin. There is no unrighteousness in Him. Sin is universal for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And sin carries with it legal ramifications that demand a payment. Aren't you thankful that Jesus Christ is our payment for our sin? And we can talk about every other person's sin today. But what about your sin? What about mine? I am a sinner. Charles Spurgeon said, I am a great sinner, but I also have a great Savior. Where sin abounded, grace did what? 
much more abound. That's the God that we serve. The thought here is this, when God forgives, He really forgives. Totally, completely. Our sins are gone forever. As far as the east is from the west, you know, if it said the north from the south, and there's a point where you go north and then you start going south. So he didn't use that, that expression. He said as far as the east is from the west, when you go east, there's never a point where you have to stop because you're going west. And the same way when you go west. God is saying right here, it is total and complete forgiveness of sin. What a picture of this as far as the east is from the west. I like this, number three, write this down. We must bless the name of the Lord because of His heart of compassion for us. What a tender picture right here, verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear Him. The thought of pity here is to tenderly caress, to cherish as a father or mother a child, to be compassionate toward. God cherishes us. I think of little Lawrence yesterday. He was at the house. He smiles almost all the time. When I spoke to him coming into the great room, I said, Lawrence! I called him Law too, all right? I've got a nickname for everybody. And by the way, that's a term of endearment, right? A nickname is? I said, Law! How you doing, man? And he just perked up, you know, and he's all smiles. And, and uh, it's so precious. It just, it just draws you unto him. And uh, I talked and kidded with him a little bit as he was on the floor there. And then I asked Cope, I said, let me hold him. Let me hold him. And I held him. And I held him close. And I hugged. I want to tell you, there's nothing like holding a little one like that. And rubbing their little arm, you know, the little cheeks, rubbing up against them. I even played Brahma Bull with him. How many of you know what that is? You understand that? I want to tell you, I held him up there. I did this with all of my kids. I grew up there in Rymertown where we had the livestock auction sale every Monday. Those bulls would come through there. You know what a Brahma Bull looks like, right? With the big hump. How many of you know what I'm talking about, Okay. And uh, we need to educate this generation, all right? And uh, they think hamburger comes from McDonald's, you know. That's not where it comes from. And uh, so, but I held him up and I said, let's play Brahma Bull. So I put his forehead against mine and I, and I just pushed back on him. And uh, we played and I thought, how tender it is because how precious this little fella is. I think his grandparents, how many grandparents do we have here today? Isn't that wonderful? Wow, a lot of grandparents. Praise the Lord for that. And I love my children, but there's something about these grandchildren. Isn't that right? If nothing else, I'm a lot more mature and able to appreciate what God has blessed me with. These precious little ones in my hand. And how tender that is to my heart. How much love that I have within for them. And I think about God's heart toward me. That's the way the Lord feels toward us. That's the way He looks at us. Amen. That's the way He sees us. Aren't you thankful for that? He loves us with an everlasting love, a, a love that will never perish. It will never dim. It will never diminish. It will never go away. There's nothing that's able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Nothing God's love for us is constant. He has a heart of compassion toward us, tenderness toward us. He pities us in that sense that He cherishes us. There's an endearment to the heart and the mind of God when He looks upon us like we would look at our children or our grandchildren. I mentioned recently about the prodigal son. I'm sure he was tired of the mess that he was in and all the things that he had lost, but really when it came down to it, I'm sure he missed his father because of all the people who said, hey, you're my buddy, you're my friend, hey, we're best uh, pals. Those friends, when the money was gone, they were gone. 
But his dad was back home where he had always been, right? And it's like, if I could just get back home. I mean, I would take anything. <laughs> but if I could just get back home, it's not about just having a place to, to eat and sleep and things like that. But if I could get back to my father, he says, I will arise and go to my father. Isn't that amazing? Now, I want to tell you, there's a God in heaven who's at work in each of our lives. And he says, I will arise and go to my Father. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's what God wants us to see. That it's all about being in his presence. This Christian life, this life that God has given us, is a life of grace and glory. This heart of compassion. I miss my Father Someone who truly loves me unconditionally. And then lastly, look at this. Number four, we must bless the one who's blessed us because of this moment he's given us to live. I want you to write down the word significant under that. Significant. A limited time of space. Here's what he says about our lives. Now God knows our frame. He remembers that we're dust. He knows what we're made of. He knows our limitations. He knows, by the way, our individual challenges, our troubles, our trials, our, our moments of weakness, our vulnerabilities. He knows all there is to know about us. But the Bible says in verse 15, As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. We live and we die. We come and we go. And God knows this about each of us. And God wants us to see that that's the way our lives are going to be. We just kind of flourish for a time and then we begin to fade and then we're gone. That's life. It's a moment in time that God has given us to impact eternity. What we do here in our space of grace can outlive us and continue to impact others long after we're gone. God wants us to see the importance of putting the eternal over the temporal. Because we're just here in this moment, but God has given us this moment. This all came from the hand of God. He gave you this moment. I thought during the night, the measure of health that God has given me, I must use it for His glory. The measure of days that I have left, I must use them for God. I'm going to use them for something, right? I'm going to spend my time doing something. May the Lord help me to spend my days doing something for Him, for His glory. Oh, may God speak to us about living a life of significance over a life of success. You know, success can be defined in so many different ways. But how about a life of significance, a life that impacts people while we're alive and then after we leave this world? I read this illustration by Daniel Anderson, the president of Ambassador or uh, Appalachian Bible College. And I got this in an email, and I thought it was so good, and I want you to hear this. He wrote, It is common knowledge that the power source of a battery involves a negative and a positive post. Without the proper placement of a battery of an, in an item, the flow of power cannot be released. A negative plus a positive equals power. The same can be seen in the high priestly prayer of our Lord. He states a negative. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Neither or never was it the intent of Jesus to remove his children from the domain of the depraved world. If we're taken out of the world, how can we impact it? Think of that. What a critical negative was prayed by our Savior. But he likewise prayed a positive, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil or the evil one. We are kept by the Father. Now that's an amazing positive provision. To keep reflects two precious truths. First, we are protected by Almighty God. More secure is no one ever than the loved ones of the Savior, it's been said. Secondly, we are precious, keepsakes, if you will, cherished by God the Father. Combine this negative and this positive, 
and experience the divine power of God as we serve our Savior in prayer. This is the flow of God in our lives when the negative and the positive come together. The power of God working in us, working and flowing through us to impact the lives of others. Now, there's a time when I'd like to be out of this world and I'm sure you feel the same way. But Jesus said, I'm going to take you out right now, but I'm going to leave you here so that you can have a positive impact. Live a life of significance while you're here. So let me ask you, what are you all wrapped up in that's wasting your time and your energy? Things that don't matter. What are you carrying in your heart today that's weighing you down, holding you back from being all that God wants you to be? Would you get your heart and your mind cleansed and renewed and restored before God that we would just bless His name, that God would work in and through our lives that we would say, Lord, you're worthy of our praise. I want to tell you, give this church a full house of people with a heart of praise, of gratitude. And I want to tell you, not only will God be magnified, but the greater blessings of God will yet flow into our lives and through this church to our city and beyond. God inhabits the praise of His people. God wants us to be a praising people all the way through to bless His holy name. Because of His immeasurable mercy, complete forgiveness, cherishing compassion, and this significant moment He's given us to live, we must bless the one who has blessed us. He's blessed me. Has He blessed you? Has it been good to you? Are you going to bless the Lord this week with your lips, with your life, with your loved ones, with the level of opportunity you have? How about your legacy? Are you going to bless the name of the Lord in the lives of those that you impact and leave behind? I pray it would be so in each of our hearts. Say it with me again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. These are just but four of them today. But oh, what benefits and blessings they are. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Maybe God is...